Hello, in this video we are going to derive an aggregate demand curve. So here's the setup for the economy. The consumption function in the economy is given as C equals 250 plus 0 0.75 Y minus T, where Y is income and T is taxes. We have an investment function I, uh, and R over here represents the interest rate. We have government purchases that we'll call G, and we have taxes, as I mentioned over here, that we'll call T. Um, we have a money demand function as well. We got the money supply divided by the price level equals income minus 100 times the interest rate. So this is a closed economy. There are no imports or exports. It just keeps things a little bit simpler. So in a closed economy, uh, income, GDP, output equals C plus I plus G. So the first step is to substitute in for these three variables. So for C, we'll plug in the consumption function, which I have written here. For I, we will plug in the investment function. And G is G, government purchases. Step two, we're going to solve the money demand equation for R. So here's the money demand equation. We're going to solve this for R, the interest rate. So doing that, uh, moving 100R over to the other side and dividing everything through by 100, uh, we have this equation. So the next step will be to plug this R into e the equation from step one. So here's the equation from step one. And for R, I will plug in this Y divided by 100 minus M divided by 100 times P. So I do that. And now it's a matter of simplifying and solving this for Y. So I, first thing I do, I take this 0.75 and multiply it through by what's in parentheses. So we get the 0.75Y and minus 0.75T, where T is taxes. The 300 is still here. Then we get minus 25Y divided by 100, and then a minus 25 multiplied by a minus M divided by 100P gives us a positive 25M over 100P, and the G is still here. Uh, simplifying some more, let's see, 300 plus 250 is 550. Um, this minus 25Y divided by 100, we can write as minus 0.25Y. Likewise, this 25 divided by 100 is another 0.25. And just carry this over to the next screen. So carrying this over to the next screen. Uh, and then we got minus 0.75y. I'm sorry, we got plus 0.75y minus 0.25y. That's where this 0.5y is coming from. Uh, nothing else changes. Subtracting 0.5y from both sides, so moving this 0.5y to the left-hand side is what I have here. That will just simply equal 0.5y or one half y. So we got this on the left-hand side now. And I'm going to multiply through by 2. So multiplying everything through by 2, we have this. And then taking this 2 and multiplying it through by what's in parentheses, we have our aggregate demand curve. And as I've written up here, our aggregate demand depends on G. Depend G is government purchases. It depends on taxes. depends on the money supply, and it depends on the price level. Uh, we can also see the downward sloping nature of aggregate demand. An increase in P holding T, G, and M constant will mean uh, we'll have a decrease in the quantity of aggregate demand. So the aggregate demand curve does slope downwards. Another thing we can see here is that if M or G increases, okay, uh, that'll lead to an increase in aggregate demand. And uh, an increase in T would lead to a decrease in aggregate demand. So that is how you derive an aggregate demand curve. I hope you found this video helpful.